Welcome to A Course in Miracles with a Ho'oponopono lens. We're on lesson 290 out of the workbook. My present happiness is all I see. Unless I look upon what is not there, my present happiness is all I see. Because we're in the now, we're in the present. If we're not in the now and in the present, we're looking upon something that is not there. Eyes that begin to open, see at last, and I would have Christ's vision come to me this very day. So how does Christ see my brother? How does Christ see my sister? How does Christ see the circumstance? What I perceive without God's own correction for the sight I made is frightening and painful to behold. Yet, I would not allow my mind to be deceived by the belief the dream I made is real an instant longer. We're going to put away the idolatry of thinking that this dream is real. This day I seek my present happiness and look on nothing else except the thing I seek. And we're going to seek peace, joy, love. And so we're only going to have Christ's vision in every moment. With this resolve, we are making a choice moment by moment. With this resolve, I come to you and ask your strength to hold me up today while I but seek to do your will. You cannot fail to hear me, Father. You cannot fail to hear me, Father. What I ask, have you already given me? And I am sure that I will see my happiness today. I'm just taking a deep breath because I want these words to seep into me. There's a scripture that says watch. I think it says watch and pray, but we're watching our thoughts. We're being vigilant over the thoughts we're thinking. We're choosing to bring every thought under the captivity of Christ, meaning that we're going to see what Christ's vision today. We're going to see our brothers. And what happens if you might be triggered and uh, you're not seeing your brother with Christ's vision? We can do Ho'oponopono. We can do forgiveness work. We can read over this principle over and over and over until we train our mind. Course in Miracles is a mind training program. So say you're triggered or you just, and it may not have to be a trigger over a person. It could be a trigger over a situation. Say you didn't get that promotion. Say you didn't get that raise. Say your boss is not a good person, according to your estimate. You can always do Ho'oponopono to rewrite those erroneous thoughts because when we have a situation we are putting the meaning onto it. Who says your boss is a jerk? You know, that's a judgment value that you have made and are making. And so we want to be in zero as much as possible. So that's why I do Ho'oponopono over everything, uh, including triggers. And I try to do Ho'oponopono as much as possible because there might be times when I don't even know that I have a trigger uh, I told you guys, I believe it was a few months ago, that I was in a park and I've walked by this frog statue so many times, probably a hundred times. But one day, for some reason, I was feeling a sense of offness, a sense of anxiety and fear. And then immediately the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance what happened with me, um, with my aunt and uncle as a child. They weren't uh, malicious or anything, but I perceive their meanness that way. They wouldn't let me play with their stuffed frog animal, but somehow that got imprinted on me. And so I did Ho'oponopono and I'm able to walk past the park again without having that trigger. But we don't know. I said all that to say sometimes we don't even know we have this underlying trigger there. Sometimes something has to happen before that trigger pops up. It might be a certain person that you need to come across or a certain smell that you smell and then it brings your, your subconscious mind back. Um, 
I believe it was Dr. Hugh Lin in one of his seminars that said the conscious mind can only process maybe 25 bits of information at a time, but our subconscious mind is processing and wiring thousands, millions of information per second. And, you know, consciously, we don't know it because we can only process 25 bits of information. So I said all that to say we might have an aversion to something, but we don't know it until that exact same situation or a like situation comes up. And then that is a trigger. Living on Earth, we have so much to clear. And I'm grateful for Ho'oponopono because you don't even have to be consciously aware of what you need to clear especially if you choose to do it moment by moment. So whether you're triggered or whether you choose to do it moment by moment or whether you choose to do it for upcoming events, try to do Ho'oponopono as much as possible. How do you do Ho'oponopono? Glad you asked. To divinity, you say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you, thank you. We say that over and over on a loop as much as possible, silently within yourself. Or you can say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Sometimes when I'm in a conversation with someone, I'll just say to, to both divinity and that person's uh, self internally, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I feel like people feel that. Um, if you're walking down the street and saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you. Thank you is too much to say because you kind of want to be aware of your surroundings. You can just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And sometimes I'll just be minding my own business, doing what I need to do. And I could hear in my background, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, just playing over and over. And the subconscious mind has taken over doing the whole ponopono for me. I just love whole ponopono and because it connects me to divinity and um, I feel like I'm able to have a better relationship with divinity now uh, than even when I was growing up in the church as a Christian. Okay, so that is it for today's lesson. I look forward to speaking with you the next time tomorrow or maybe I might come on with another video later on today. It all just depends on how I'm inspired to do it, but thank you so much, and I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.